Hello everyone. Um, you're welcome to how to implement online learning for schools. I'm really glad to present this uh, webinar to you. And uh, how are you doing today? And how are you all doing with uh, the lockdown? Uh, we deemed it uh, very, very necessary to come up with this uh, training so that um, every one of us will be able to understand how to really implement an online learning for our schools. Um, we've been faced with a lot of challenges uh, because of the pandemic and um, schools have been shut down, businesses shut down, so we're not able to really, uh, some of us were not able to conclude our um, school year, I mean the term, some institutions that are not even uh, uh, secondary, primary, and tertiary uh, institutions were not also able to conclude with their programs. But um, thank God for technology that we have these days. And uh, that's why the online learning platform is a very good place for each and every one of us as uh, education providers. And this makes it very, very good for us to be able to reach out to our students, our participants, for different kinds of things that we do. So my name is Patrick Ajuan. I'm a, an editor consultant. I have a master's in financial economics and I also in a, a education economist. I practice education. Um, technology in different uh, arenas and this have been very very uh, is one of my passion so let's look at what we have for today and I would like all of you to first of all look at the things we have for today introduction to online teaching and learning then how it works and benefits and frequently asked questions about this online learning, how you'll be able to implement this. What to consider as a new online instructor um, as a school that have just implemented uh, online uh, learning? What are those things that you need to consider as um, your teachers will now transit from traditional learning and training and instructor, uh, uh, being traditional instructors to uh, online uh, instructors. So please, um, if you're here, I would like you to type in your name, um, your institution, if you're from any, maybe primary, secondary, uh, university or any of the tertiary institutions, uh, you can as well leave your position there for us to know and the way you would like us to um, address you. So part of the um, uh, things that we'll do here as housekeeping, please keep your phone on silence. If you have any uh, suggestions, you can just raise your hand. Um, my colleague will answer, and uh, if you have, want to drop a chance, we will answer you. There will be time for us to ask you some questions, and uh, we expect that you honestly answer us your own uh, best possible way. Okay, so now online learning is the newest and most popular form of education today, as we all have seen. Within the past decade, it has had a major impact on post-secondary education. Uh, that was in the last decade, but today it has cut across all levels of education, from nursery, primary, secondary, informal sectors. Because even when you get to um, organizations, their learning and management uh, departments also have to implement some level of uh, online learning for uh, their workers to have soft skills, and sometimes professional trainings. So now that we have uh, problems with, uh, um, because of the pandemic, all institutions have been shut down and uh, it's really going to be for some time. 
So because of the COVID-19, um, most of the institutions have gone online and uh, through the online platform, they're able to teach their students and learning did not stop. So in this webinar, we'll explore what experience of online learning is like for students, and how it can be implemented by schools. Because who is the ultimate, uh, um, uh, the ultimate uh, receiver of this online learning that we want to implement is the students, your students. So he, uh, he helps with continuity. So what is online learning? Online learning is education that takes place over the internet. It is often uh, referred to as e-learning. Some people also call it virtual learning, among other terms. However, online learning is just one type of distance learning. The umbrella term for any learning that takes place across distance and not in traditional fashion. So now, with online learning, what, what, have we, what will you be able to achieve? You've, um, there's no boundaries, there's no uh, limit, um, there's no time frame for you to really reach out to your students and people that you need to um, educate or to impart knowledge to. So uh, that is what online learning is. It's a virtual world. And in virtual world these days, both trade is going up online. Education too is really thriving online. So what are the different types of distance learning? The past who have corresponded courses, which is still on now, conducted through regular mails with little interactions. Telecourses, where content is delivered via radio or television broadcast. I know that uh, in some parts of the country, because of the uh, pandemic, and uh, a lot of us have not really uh, worked on an online um, platform. We don't have a platform for our students. So um, different uh, government uh, institutions, different uh, nations and their government we're able to come up with uh, this kind of uh, learning, telecourses, where uh, people will be asked to uh, students, children, um, different people at different levels, learn from uh, the curricula that they have on uh, through uh, televisions and uh, radios and other platforms. So we also have another type, which is uh, the CD-ROM courses where the student interacts with static computer content. Uh, you just give them what they will learn in, the, in this. We now have online learning, which is the internet-based courses offered synchronously and all asynchronously. What do we mean by this? It's something that you can easily learn online. It's virtual. Now we also have mobile learning. By, by this we mean um, using devices such as uh, mobile phones, cellular phones, uh, PDS, digital audio players like iPads, MP3 um, players. Then um, even under the um, uh, under the mobile learning, these days we we'll have some apps that you can learn from online uh, through uh, the mobile learning, which is WhatsApp. WhatsApp, um, so many of the institutions, even my, my children's uh, um, school had to uh, at least adapt to using WhatsApp to instruct uh, some of my, to instruct my children, to engage them. And, and I'm very, very happy they did that because it's a bit low hanging fruit. Uh, at this time, you must be able to um, somehow improvise. So I have reach out to your students and any, any way you can do that, you do. So WhatsApp is a mobile learning and uh, it's really also um, very good, but a mix of all, that's why we have this uh, webinar. So by far the most popular approach today is online learning. Online enrollments continue to grow at rates faster than uh, for the broader student population. And with the pandemic, just as I mentioned earlier, we expect the rates of growth to continue increasing 
you know, because of the uh, issues that we have at hand, um, <laughs> is now very, very obvious to every education institution to if you are if you are, don't have any online presence before, if you don't have anything um, that you've um, come up with online, um, it's now that everybody must have some level of their um, teachings online so that uh, you don't have any disruption. So in fact, as a matter of fact, all schools must implement online learning going forward to be able to continuously educate their students without hindrance. So learning has changed and can be 247. It can be um, uh, at any person's pace. It can also be um, the same way you have it in a traditional way, where it's time-based. Um, others can be integrated into your online learning. So primary schools, secondary, tertiary institutions, um, organizations uh, with uh, different employees can, uh, their learning and management uh, departments can easily come up with uh, an online system for learning. Um, government establishments, the Ministry of Education can also um, have uh, the whole curricula to be um, incorporated in an online learning for their citizens. So how does this work? Yes, but schools had to, uh, it will be on, on the tradition, do they create their virtual classrooms from scratch to, which means um, sometimes it's very, very difficult for them to do, often led to poor results. But today we can integrate an already made easy to use robust learning management system for your schools through the use of learning management system. You know, um, when you look at other professions, um, we always say that they have uh, plugins, they have different apps, they have different solutions. And, uh, the education system is not left out. But there's also those kind of uh, tools that we already have in place. And we've been um, really um, doing this for so many organizations and it's, it's been uh, very, very successful. So this allows schools to design and deliver their courses within a flexible framework that includes a number of different tools to enable learning and communication to occur. So what are the benefits for you to implement an online teaching for your school? Why do we do this? So um, for you to do this, what are the benefits? So many must, uh, you know that every organization will always say, what is the need for me? If I must do this, why must I not remain traditional? Why must it not be the same way you used to know it? Um, I had uh, a lot of uh, one of the institutions that used to um, sell clothing to people. And every month they make millions of pounds and dollars. But because of this uh, disruption that happened, which is not uh, of any anyone's making, and nobody envisaged this. What has happened? Throughout the one or two months now, they end zero pounds. I mean, zero pounds. Same is happening to schools. Same is happening in the education sector. So, why do we, what, what, what is it for us if we must implement online learning? Online learning means the needs of ever-growing population of students who cannot or prefer not to participate in traditional classrooms settings. Remember, we have a lot of uh, people who have come up now, what do we call them? The new generation, the millennials. The millennials and the uh, younger ones who are in secondary primary schools. These are digital students. These are digital children. 
and being digital children, you cannot, things cannot continue in the way we used to know before of uh, going traditional. This will learn with um, the digital devices that you and I know that uh, they were born into. So um, it's no longer um, a, a thing of, um, can, will I need, do I really need the online learning to be implemented in my uh, school or my education system? Well, let me tell you one truth is now a must. It's now a must. So, so many of them, you can have a blend of it, uh, but you are traditional in the classroom. So these learners include those unable to attend traditional classes who cannot find a particular class at their chosen institution who live in remote locations, who work full time and can only study at or after work, and those who simply prefer to learn independently. In the past, I know um, while I was in school, we used to have uh, this, uh, we we'll have two schools in, 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 a, uh, in secondary school, even primary school. We we'll have two schools uh, in one location. You can have urban secondary school one, which is uh, which starts from morning to one o'clock or thereabouts. Then the other one will start from that one o'clock till evening. So um, I will not say that there's no innovation. It has been there traditionally, but this has been taken from that number of hours that we used to go to now 24 hours. Even though that was uh, done in, during our time, some other schools chose not to have two schools in one place. But those schools that did that, because they understand their community, that they have quite a number of children that they need to teach. So they divided the schools into how many? Two, three. The same thing happens in churches. Churches have church one, church two, church three. Why are they doing this? In order to reach out to the, the, the teaming population, that comes for what their yeah, services, that means spiritual teachings. In your, our own uh, sector, that's the education sector. Yes, thank God for technology. We cannot reach out to people anywhere in the world. So it's all for us to grab. We can think out of the bus. We must not be limited by our boundaries within our geographical location, within what we do, what we used to know before. The people you know within your reach, now you can reach to the world, you can reach out to the world with all that you have. So at pandemic times like this, online learning can be of great help to schools to educate their students. You can as well maximize physical through financial resources. Why do what do we mean by this? The lessons demand on limited school infrastructure and resources. Because once you have an online uh, platform and you've uh, digitized all that you have, what will happen? The, um, your people will be able to, uh, you'll be able to save a lot of costs. So, what are still the benefits? The minimum requirement for students to participate in an online course is what? Just for them to have access to a computer or a smartphone, which we know that almost all of them have. The internet, that's having a data, and the motivation to succeed in a non traditional classroom. Online courses provide an excellent method of course delivery unbound by time or location, allowing for accessibility to instruction. At any time from anywhere, they can easily access um, these course materials. So learners find the online environment a convenient way to fit education into their busy lives. The ability to assess a course from any computer with internet access two, four, seven, a day, and it has tremendous incentive for many of today's students. Now, we are going to look at some of the questions
that people do ask concerning this. But before we uh, go into this, I want to ask you a question. Just, just let me know. Do you think this can be implemented in your own place? Is there any need for this? You can just leave a comment for me, um, a chat, um, so that we we'll understand. If you have any problem concerning um, implementing online learning in your place, you can just let me know now. So how is online teaching different from traditional teaching? This is the first question normally people ask. So normally what we'll see is the online model emphasizes on interactive learning. <clears throat> interactive learning environment designed to stimulate dialogue between a structure and students and among students themselves. The online process requires both instructors and students to take active roles. The instructor will often act, act as a facilitator, organizing activities that engage students directly rather than relying too heavily on lectures and their memorization. So in an online um, platform, the same things that you do on um, your uh, traditional um, classroom, questions that you ask, activities that is being done, um, sometimes games. You can integrate all this into your online learning platform and the students will still feel as if it's still the same, um, um, learn the same training that you are, they are receiving. So what are the questions schools should consider when implementing online learning? How can you accommodate different learning styles online? You know, so many people also ask that question. Uh, I am a traditional person. I've been teaching, and my school will be, will be in existence for the past 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. So all that we know is this uh, traditional way. How can you accommodate different learning styles online? How will I be able to see my uh, students and be able to, because as a teacher, you have been taught that while you are teaching, you have eye contact. You'll be looking at students to understand the slow learners, the, the people who are genius, and uh, all that will be incorporated as a trained teacher. You will identify all that. But on my yes, the same thing is done. You can easily integrate a model, all that, and package it into your training. That's the way we do. Although, as professionals in this, you will receive um, different trainings to to give you, to to equip you to be able to do all this. Another question is: How might you convert the learning activities you use, you use in the traditional classroom? To the online environment. Is it possible to use your materials as it is now? Or will you need to retain how your material is presented? Yes, you still need to look at how you present, incorporating the traditional things that you do before. So um, a lot of digitization will go in here and that's where professionals like us come in to uh, let you know how to digitize how to make your presentation to be classy. And uh, you know, um, we are going to make the information as simple as possible. It's not going to be lengthy uh, all the time. They can have it in small, small bites. And that's how it's done. So lecturing is the most common method of presenting content in college classrooms, of which all of us know. So why is lecturing a less productive method of teaching in the online environment? Online environment should be interactive. You must make it to be interactive. The new people, the new set of learners don't just want you to come and drop it there for them the same way in those normal traditional um, learning um, platform where lecturers just come drop uh, 
dropping hot on them with uh, um, their coursework and all that. So you must have to integrate some level of um, practical and uh, interactive uh, lessons for them. So in the virtual classroom, lectures are short a few, just as I mentioned earlier. Would this be in the case? Where are the students going to get the information they need to obtain the learning objectives? So you are going to give them some tips. When you teach, you point them to different places where they are going to get information concerning each and every topic. This gives them uh, the opportunity to research, to go into the globe and research more. And I noticed as some of the online uh, platforms normally, uh, it's no longer those kind of research that we used to do in those days when you are teaching students to say, oh, um, get your research. Your research document must be between three years publication of five, five years publication to more recent things. You cannot give them, you cannot be allowed to be using things of 1970, 80. Yes, you can just uh, get to one or two uh, references from there, but there are more modern things to do. So now, just as I asked earlier, do you think you will be able to implement online learning for your school? Please kindly answer. I will allow you, I'll give you two minutes, three minutes for you to type in. Um, I want you to, um, you can as well even talk to us now about it. Okay, um, thank you so much. It's been an enlightening experience listening to this. And it's so needed in today's world. Um, um thank experience this um, have questions, questions and leave can leave questions, questions below we want to them, them in the comments. Comment. I know sometimes, I know sometimes um, uh, when you hear when online, you hear learning, online learning massive, massive and, and, you know like you something know, like something that, that can't be yeah, easy. but there are yeah. mentioned Patrick mentioned that there are low hanging fruit. but they are like you know low hanging fruits you can start implementing you know, no low tech. No, there are several places for so the types of schools to start. Places, thank you so much. Several types of schools. You can go on. Okay. Thank you, Ajibo. So um, let's look at is online teaching right for us? So the school plays a vital role in developing and maintaining an effective online learning environment. And must possess a unique set of tools for to perform successfully. Some schools from the traditional classroom environment will easily adapt to this online model, while others may find the transition challenging. So reflect on your teaching style, circumstances, and technical skills to see if teaching online is right for them. So in, uh, for this, um, I would say that professionals like us will always be available to help your school to transit from the traditional uh, classroom environment to the online uh, environment. Uh, there's a lot to go in and uh, we'll always be ready to take you through the process. The tools that, they, they, that is needed, the um, training that each and every one of the instructors that you already have. I we're not saying that nobody, you're not changing the same, the people who are teaching in your schools. Uh, but if need be, um, if one or two is not able to meet up, well, um, we'll be able to know what to do. But they will all be taken through a process where they can still do the same thing they're doing traditionally. Uh, online. So school training and commitment. Are you willing to invest significant amount of time and energy in preparation for teaching your course online? Are you willing to spend time rethinking and redesigning your teaching materials to fit the needs of the
the online environment. You remember I mentioned that the physical training that you do as a teacher, as um, a lecturer, as an instructor, maybe you really need to know how to do presentation online, how to um, get your PowerPoint uh, in a very catchy way. And it has to represent the audience. So these are things that will come into play. Um, the kind of games that is needed, the kind of comic relief that will be needed for your students. And when we say students, that does not mean only the um, education sector alone. Um, when we get to organizations like uh, different firms, in, in different firms, they have employees. And there are some level of professional teachings that they need, even soft skills for them to get their jobs done in the right way. So um, this can also be, there yeah, can be or can develop an online learning management system for companies. Uh, it's already in place in so many places and now we've already been doing that for some organizations that we work with. So are you willing to invest time in professional development to continue learning new online teachers or technical skills in the future. These are things that schools training uh, the commitment they need to know. So now let's look at some of the technical uh, tools that we we'll, we'll, we'll need for implementing online learning. These are not, it's not exhaustive. I just, uh, will just give you some examples. There are, there's a thousand and one of them that we use and that you can easily uh, use, but you can always uh, uh, do some research on it and then know how to go to implement any of this. So we have infographics, test to, test to speech podcast tools, surveys, pools, and uh, quizzes, because you must, once in a while, you need to ask questions to your students. The same way you do in the um, traditional setting. So questions, goods, um, theoretical questions, and uh, objective questions can be uh, automated, and uh, your students will answer screen capturing tools, photo and image editing tools. Um, we'll have tests and quizzing. Okay, we we'll have it there, right? Then web conferences, annotation, video tools, PDF tools. So you need to have all this. So for infographics, we'll have, I mean for graphics, we'll have Canva, and we we'll also have crypto chat. How do you go? I would like you to, okay. Uh, how do you go? We'll have time, just as I mentioned later in the other series of this. Uh, when we talk about some of these tools, Canva is a graphic tool that you can use to make beautiful graphics, catchy graphics for your audience. Picture chat is one of them. Then we'll have the survey pools and quizzes. Um, you can use the Google Forms. Uh, part of Google Drive collects uh, this, run a survey or quickly create a team roster with a simple online form. Then check out the results neatly organized in a spreadsheet. So you can just make out time to go to Google Forms, so research on it and see how it works. If you have any questions, you can always ask us. So remember, this is just an introductory class. And what we're trying to point out for you is how to implement this and how tools that we can just use a few. We also have class marker, we we'll have the survey monkey. These are survey pools that you, uh, survey um, uh, pools that you can use. Podcast tools, we we'll have Audacity, Audacity is a, we have free part of it, open source cross-platform. 
software for recording and editing sounds. Audacity is available for Windows and all this. So we also have MP3 My MP3 Recorder. Saves any audio you hear on your computer straight to MP3 or uh, Worth. We have the anchor.com. So please take out time to um, research on these tools. If you have any questions, you can always let us know. We also have the test to uh, speech tools. We have the Power Talk. Power Talk is, uh, they also have the free platform of it that automatically speaks any presentation. They also have the page part of it. So you, you, you can do that. Um, it talks, it speaks any presentation or slideshow running in Microsoft PowerPoint for Windows. You just download and install Power Talk. And while you open and run the presentation as usual, it speaks the test on your slides. So the advantage over the graphic test speech program is that Power Talk is able to speak test as it appears and can also speak hidden test attached giving you so you have to understand that. We also have test to voice. That's TTS gives Firefox the power of speech. Select test, click the button on the button right of Firefox Windows and this add-on speaks. So you can take a look at this and practice. If you have any issues you can always let us know. Also have the video. On video you have the screencast automatic um, is a screencast tool which has both web based and desktop version. It's very easy to use and will run so long as you have Java installed on your computer. It has free video hosting and allows you to record your screen on both your screen and webcam. So you can take a look at screencast automatic and understand how it functions. We also have the Zoom. Uh, Zoom is what we're having, what we have now. Uh, what does it do? Um, okay, so you check what uh, those two stuff can do for you. Photo and image editing. So you have the photo pitch. The photo pitch idea is to help you tell better stories online using photos. With photo pitch, you can create a rich slideshow. It sounds to engage your friends, family, engage your uh, students. So we also support background music, captions, and comments so you can elaborate on your story further. So you also have a peak marker free. These are some of the photo image uh, editing tools. Now the testing and quizzing, we'll have the class marker, we'll have easy test marker. Class marker, how does it work? A uh, secure professional web-based testing service is an easy to use, customizable online test marker for business, for schools, training, and educational assessment will test and quizzes graded instantly. It grades your students instantly. What do you have? It saves you hours of uh, paperwork. So we also have easy test marker and so many others. Is a free online test generator to help you create tests. So you don't need to overthink. All you need to do is to take down all those, uh, all those, uh, your curriculum that you have, all the notes that you already have in place. You put it in there as far as it's digitized. The test, uh, the easy test marker will give you possible questions that you can ask. So you just take a look at that and uh, automate. <coughs> Excuse me. So we also have uh, web conferencing. So please let me just, um, if you don't mind, let me take water. Okay. So how is it going? Hope um, you are having a, you are thinking of how to Implement all this in your school and your education. So we also have for web conferencing. Web conferencing will have any 
meeting. Thank you very much. Any meeting will have the free um, side of it. It allows for meetings of up to 200 people and has essential functionalities like screen sharing, VoIP, and uh, phone conferencing. We have Zoom on, zoom.us. Um, sorry for the typo. We also have GoToMeeting and so many other web conferencing uh, too. So you can just research on that and uh, or if you have any issues, you let me know. Now, we also have stock photo. What do you use stock photo for? We have public domain pictures.net. It's a repository of uh, free public uh, domain photos. We have the one, even Canva have photos too. You can download high quality photos, upload your own pictures, earn money to charity. They use these pictures for uh, whatever you want. You know, when you are presenting to students, there are some uh, ideas you need to really um, give out to these students or impact on them. What do you do with the photos? They will be able to really, it will stick. So go there, check pictures that you need. Once you're making a PowerPoint presentation, you can pick any pictures that you like and um, make it yours. Free images is not just another picture graphic site. More than 6,000 original stock photos. They have these ones for free. So these are, we are providing all this, um, a few tools so that you can um, start up uh, your, your online learning um, journey um, easily. We also have uh, the PDF tools for you, Adobe Reader. You can always use that. We also have, you can um, research on uh, um, different uh, PDF converters in case you need to convert uh, some of the document that you have to PDF or PDF to uh, Word or to PowerPoint. So these are the things that you can do. Um, and for every um, school or instructor that wants to um, implement an online learning system. There are so many tools there that you can use while you have professionals that can bring all these things together. Then you must have your own, sometimes you can have your normal website that is already working um, where this learning management system that we just mentioned can be implemented for us to customize it to be used. To customize this, we can use uh, different um, like Lendash and others to make it your own, to uh, plug it into your system. And uh, you have a very beautiful learning management system that anybody can easily learn from anywhere in the world. Um, so here we go. Now we've um, provided this, I just mentioned to you now, um, the learning management system that we've provided for some learning organizations, Nigerian Army Resource Center, National Institute for Cultural Orientation. Then for different organizations, we deal with so many of them. And uh, we've been providing services. Um, if you go to our website, you'll be able to see more of what we do. And um, just as we said, Right Track is the number one learning management system edutech consultant provider. Um, it's one of our core solutions that will bring to organizations to different industries, to the education sector. So we have so many professionals, edutech professionals who can lead um, this Lead you, lead your um, online learning management transformation. transformation project. So you can always get to us at www.rightrackconsult.com.ng. Um, email is also here and phone contact. Thank you very much for listening, and uh, we really appreciate you for coming.
Okay, thank you so much for participating. Okay, thank, thank you, you so much for participating. It's been an thank amazing you, Patrick. Session it's been an you know, amazing sure we've session. All and, up. You know, I'm One sure we all the picked other. up. Like One we said earlier, other. you know, starting like your earlier, digital transformation for your school your is what we do at Right Trust. So we are there to support you, you know, for provide your any advice you, you may need right track when you do contact us. So, so do we have a lovely day ahead you, and you, know, you need us to come in so do you know, have to a talk with your administration, you know, or you even have a virtual chat in, with you know, them to talk with your during this lockdown period. We can schedule you that virtual or chat or have a you virtual chat with them. Thank you so much. Maybe during this lockdown, you can all right, thank you very much and have a wonderful day.